Hi, this is uh, Fred Simino from ProfileFrog.com, and uh, today I have the pleasure of talking with uh, Steen Auckland and Benjamin Mackey Videra from uh, Seven Impale. How are you doing, guys? I'm doing very fine, very well. I have the I have the cold, but okay, it's 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 all right. We're inside, so. So you're a guitar <coughs> and a vocal, and uh, you're the saxophone player, uh, Benjamin, right? Awesome. Yes. So for those who uh, don't know or are new to Seven Impales music, so can you tell us a little bit more about the band and why progressive rock? Like, why did you pick pro progressive rock as, as your music and how it, it all started back in uh, 2013 or at least for the, the EP back then? Well, I, I can start uh, since I, I, was, I was kind of the one who started the band in, back in 2010. Um, and it was kind of an idea of making, I don't know, uh, the, the idea of the band wasn't playing prog rock and it kind of, to answer that first, it was, we, we were kind of labeled as prog rock after we just made the music we wanted to make and uh, well, it's, yeah, that's kind of the story around the labeling the 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 the, the genre it, it it kind of is uh it, that's the sum of all of our inspirations like a lot of jazz and a lot of metal and that combined kind of made us being in this middle sphere of where prog rock is hovering some somehow um, yeah, 2010. Uh, there was some different members in the, the like the really f like the first months of it, but g very quickly we got. Uh, I got um, Frederick, the brother of Benjamin, um, same last name, so <laughs> which is nice well, pronunciation. You know it already. Um, uh, he started actually playing guitar first. Um, he's a brilliant guitar player as well, uh, and then uh, he. He went over to play the drums, and we got. I don't. I. I don't remember the how, who came first, but I think, Tomod, the bass player, he was supposed to start playing the the cello. He's also playing cello, and then he started playing bass, and we got Benjamin along playing the saxophone, and um, and we started doing some demo recordings and we got um, Arlen, the other guitarist, uh, he was he was helping us out um, doing like some of the recordings, like being a technician for that and we kind of all knew him uh, yeah, from, from years ago and we thought that that would be a good uh, uh, good man to have on the team and uh, we asked him to, to join us and uh, he joined and and then kind of the, the last member who like officially joined this was all this is all happening very like in very short time uh, in 2010 that was Hokon uh, which is the keyboard player and uh, after that we've been the same the same lineup and I think that's well seven and pale wouldn't be seven and pale without this lineup it would be something else probably is under a different name as as well. And after that, um, well, we played some gigs around locally, and, and you know, take some time to 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 write enough songs to have to to, to be able to play like a a full length show and stuff, and um, to to get around there and having some proper demos that takes takes a while. And then in 2012, uh, we were playing a, a branch festival for like the music business branch. Uh, here in here in the western part of Norway, and we got picked up by Charisma by Martin Kvam. And um, well, we kind of only did polish a bit on the the, the demo recordings we had from 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 earlier. Added one song, and then we had the the, the EP Beginning Relief. Um, at that point, we had a lot of music already uh, boiling, so we had we had kind of the material to start working on the the the, the debut City of the Sun. So, how did you guys come up with the, the name Seven Impale? <laughs> um, I think I have to answer this as well. 
since it was me, of course. Uh, I think Seven in Pape came up as, uh, as something that sounded cool. And then I was like thinking about, well, how can I interpret these two words together? And Seven is that's a symbolic number you find everywhere in like in religion, fairy tales, and folklore as well. And in Pale, of course, that's uh, in Pale is in Pale. Uh, so I um, joined them two together and like Seven in Pale, that's kind of uh, the, the, the idea of religion, um, which also could be fairy tales, <laughs> of course, in our opinion. Um, that in Pale is the kind of the, the, humanity somewhat and kind of leaves them uh, unable to be themselves and yeah being of their own opinions so the, that's kind of what what the seven impales mean for us and so okay. yeah seven impales uh, second album contra Paso, was released on september 16 uh, 2016 so can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the album I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, like different uh, ideas and uh, different interpretations. I guess the different band members put into different songs, but there's like a, a, a thread through the entire album that's about this supposed city of the sun, the, the sort of utopia we created in the previous album that sort of collapses and. Uh, the society uh, sort of co yeah collapses uh, due to uh, people being misled uh, and uh, the people we talk about as false prophets i mean people we uh, uh, like things we see in our universe as well like uh, these big cults that yeah people end up committing suicide just because they believe so much in their leader uh, those are the people we can refer to as false prophets people who convince people of things without really having anything to back it up with just because they <coughs> say it's true yeah so that's sort of the idea around it but it's i mean seven in pale will always be first and foremost about the music yeah absolutely and we write the songs not considering what they're supposed to be about when we write the music it's more that when we when we create the lyrics and the vocals we want them to make sense with each other. We want the songs to have a sort of a, a unity with each other. Yeah. Uh, well, absolutely. The, the music leads the way to how the how the thematics in the in the in the lyrics will be. There's no doubt about that. Of course, somehow because of the band name and how we've written before, also kind of creates the uh, the whole the whole context of lyrics as well but uh, well as 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 Benjamin said this utopia in in city of the sun is is now turning into a dystopia and that's kind of that that is really how we enter the studio with the idea of uh, and well it's it's of course it's it's bigger and yeah it's bolder as well and I was much of it's because of how I, th I think our producer Eva Sunday he had an idea about he kind of saw where we were we were going to to uh, he, he saw like the, the first songs we wrote on Seed of the Sun uh, they have a much lighter and brighter color of it and the like the the the, the later songs we wrote for Seed of the Sun was turning into much darker, heavier um, style, and and then he, yeah, I think he he then catched that and led us as well. He he, he really led the the, the 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 well, yeah, contrapasso in in its whole. He he was uh, he's uh, he's been really important on how uh, how it turned out to be. Oh, darker. Absolutely. There, there is a transition between the two albums. There is like a a meaning, right? Uh, going from one to the next. 
Like it, it does stack up to it, right? Absolutely, and and uh, <clears throat> it's also like if you listen to the last song of 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 City of the Sun, like God Left Us for a Black Dressed Woman, that is, well, well the, 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 the title of it indicates where it's, where it will go. Uh, but also like the, the, the last dramatic uh, stage of it, like with the, the, with the long build up and to, into the, like the metally sludgy riff section that leads into uh, uh, Lemma, the first song of, of, uh, of contrapasso, so it, it, it definitely is a, a, a very clear transition. That, that that was also an idea that we had when we recorded Seed of the Sun that it should be like this. So it, it was kind of foreseen. Um, well, I no, well foreseen. Well, we decided to kind of that that is the plan for the next one. Yeah, because you're using the same riff, right? Yeah, ending the song on on your first album and starting the song on your on your new album. So it, that's yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it's very prog rock. We, yeah. we thought we <laughs> we were good lads then. Like ah, good. <laughs> good. So some of your music seems to uh, reference some like uh, great bands from the '70s, such as uh, King Crimson, Bender Graph Generator, as well as newer bands like Tool and even Opet for some songs, right? So it has yeah, elements of jazz, psychedelic, amongst many other g genre. Uh, tell us about your inspiration uh, and uh, when you write music and lyrics and how you personally describe your music. It's like a melting pot. We don't really necessarily try to sound as anything. We just we create riffs and we create melodies and then sometimes we create a riff and then we create a melody around the riff and sometimes the other way around. But like uh, bands like in Crimson, like I said, we've we've always liked them, but they're ne not necessarily as big of an influence as people think on us. It's just that when we created Seed of the Sun, uh, people immediately uh, started comparing us to King Crimson, and we suddenly realized that wow, this kind of does uh, sometimes sound like King Crimson, but we never really tried to sound like King Crimson. And like Fandagraf Generato was a band most of us had barely heard of yeah. before we started recording any of the albums. And they've, they've actually not been a big influence on us, uh, honestly. But maybe, like, I was thinking maybe Fanda Graf has influenced other bands that we've listened to, that we've listened to again, and they inspired us. And so that sort of inspiration, inspiration goes in a big circle and then ended back to us. And Yeah. I think we've, we've, we've talked a lot about, especially about Van der Graaf Generat, because that band name that comes up in like almost every review, every interview, every like small article about us. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, I think we came to the point that we, we, I think we only like listen, like combined every member of the band, like listen, like 10 minutes to Van der Graaf Generat. So this it's it's but it's it's like Benjamin says it's probably it's this the whole scene has so much in common from band to band that eventually you will you will sound like like uh, like the, the music in your in your in, in your time and it's like it, it's it is very much like if you listen to like uh, the for the different eras of classical music if you for instance, listen to the Vienna classics of the 17th century. It's very often that if you if you don't know like too much about the the, the music theory around Mozart, you will probably think that he, he might as well just sound like ha uh, Joseph Haydn, because it's it's in the same era, it's the same it's the same fashion of music, it's the same audience. It's so I think that's kind of a yeah. So I think we 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 more in the tradition of it, uh, uh, yes. To be honest, but uh, for me, like uh, like early inspirations has been very much like bands in the in, from the seventies, like which have been in the like the in the, the the change between like only hard rock and like bit proggy styles. Like Deep Purple have been very very important for me while I grew up as a kid and. 
And also, my, my father listened a lot to Yetho Toll, for instance, which I, I really thought was, oh, that was really exciting music. But later on in my, uh, later on in my like, adult life, I've, it's been mostly like listening to, to uh, a lot of metal and a lot of like, all different kinds of jazz, all the way back to like, the, the, the great bebop masters of like, Coltrane and uh, Gillespie, but also like, a lot of to, like, John McLaughlin with Ma Vishnu and stuff like that. And, and no, new Norwegian jazz musicians like Yaga Yassis. That, I think Yaga Yassis, that's probably the band who's been influencing Seven Impale the most. Uh, that's a really, uh, uh, that's a name that really goes along with every, every band member in Seven Impale. But also Tool and as well Opeth, and especially like the earlier uh, earlier uh, Opeth uh, albums where they're like really in the, like the death metal uh, genre, but they're like kind of like, ah, we want to play a bit prog as well. And there, there as well, like Enslaved of Bergen, um, which which also is a band that's been like in, very much in like the black metal, uh, extreme metal um, scene, but also have a very clear progressive influence in the music. So. Cool. Uh, you guys, uh, you mentioned that earlier, you signed with Charisma Records um, uh, right from the start, basically, back in 2012, you said. So can you tell us how that happened and, and the relationship between the band and the uh, the label? Yeah, yeah uh, well, it was in um, a, a festival, which is like kind of programmed in the way that you know, they, they put up... Um, Different, uh, well, a lot of different genres and like the most promising bands of the, of the, um, the area, and there's a lot of like, uh, um, well, it's it's a it's it's it is uh, business a festival. music business festival yeah. um, where like where you meet people from like the, the record labels, booking, etc. Uh, etc. Et and and then we um, well we played a. That was a good show. I think we we were really determined to like make a big impact on that festival, and well, we did. So <laughs> after the concert was finished, um, Martin Kwam from from Charisma, he was he was he was really pumped up about this. So he really wanted to 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 work with us, and he kind of well immediately immediately he said that we should we should uh, make a record and. And sign with them, and and the the relationship with Charisma has been brilliant. They they they're just uh, well, first of all, they they're based in Bergen, which is a really nice thing. So you, if you if you have any questions or want to meet, just to meet up and discuss some plans and stuff, it, it, it's really easy to 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 organize that. Uh, and they're they're just a great bunch of people. They they know a lot about the business. And they have the, they really have the context that we, sh we we wanted. So it's been it's been uh, it's been great for us. And I, and we would never came, come to this point if it wasn't for charisma, never, really. So we're really really thankful for all the work they've done for us. And uh, hopefully they they they've enjoyed what we have come with so far. So I'm sure they do. Yeah. Uh, many, many progressive uh, rock bands from Norway, uh, Gaspacho, there's Airbag, Libris, Wobbler, Motorcycle, like, and that's just to name a few because there's a long, long list. Would you say that the progressive rock is, is back and, and well alive, right? Or is it just an illusion? I think so. I really do. I think uh, it, it, it may have uh, it may have something to do with the. There's a huge jazz scene in Norway now. There's like there are so many artists, good jazz artists, like on an international level that you could barely start to name any of them. It's uh, yeah, and uh, a lot of these people also go over to play in like bands like Motorcycle, Spider God, and uh, yeah, these insanely good progressive bands. So I think they've helped each other build up, and I don't know why there's like a progressive wave now, but maybe it goes like in 
in uh, in different time periods or something, but there's definitely a lot of good prog music from Norway right now. Okay. Is, it, is it still possible to make a living out of it? <laughs> um, <and> well, <laughs> no, not, no, not really. I mean, you have to be really, really, really big. I mean, I mm. think you have to get like too big to actually make a living out of it. Uh, because most people, like people who live off making music, they play in 10 different bands and are on tour constantly. Mm. And uh, that's the only way you can make it go around and still you you make like less than probably a regular kindergarten teacher. Yeah. But you do it because you love it, basically. But uh, like most of the band, we uh, our, our plan is Probably like we we would really like to be able to live off of Seven and Pale, but we really doubt we will be able to. So we'll just we have we get we we try to get like jobs and then we can do music on yeah. the side. Yeah, like all of all of the fees for the concerts we get just goes back straight into the to the big part that goes on to like the expenses we have to to, to cover like uh, uh, plane tickets, train tickets. Um, uh, and and like buying out CDs and vinyl so we could we can have on take on to the shows etc. Yeah. So it's it's um, yeah. But but still it's um, we just came to the point where we Norway and the and the stately fundings for music and culture. This is compared to to other countries in the world is really good. So. Um, so you will be able to make a living off it uh, at some point, but very often it is, it is for the ones who uh, who are doing a, um, a formal degree in music. Well, I, I'm I'm doing it myself, but that's in something completely different. I'm doing it in classical singing, so opera. Um, um, so that's that's not comparable to 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 rock music and, and um, commercial music at all. Um, but. Um, I think I think um, when it comes to progressive music, I think at the, the the time you have to spend and the money you have to spend to be able to come to that point where you can live off it, it's so much longer than in any in, in any genre, because that you you still have bands like who did really well in the seventies who are still playing around. And, and having a market, so it's really hard to to get that little piece of of the the the, the audience. I think because the audience is so they are so uh, uh, oh English words um, demanding or no 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 not demanding no I, I don't really think so I think they really they they really they really want to to check out the new music, so that for, for us that's that's brilliant. Um, but they are, oh, fun. Yeah, I can't find in the Norwegian word that's well. Um. They they are too fast. Um, they're really faithful. Yeah. <laughs> faithful <laughs> is the word. <laughs> so so and and there's so many bands around. So it is really it's. You just you have this much time during a week. So yeah. if you really want to listen to King Crimson, you you you'll use some hours on that. And if you want to listen to Gaspacho or you want to listen to Opeth and you and this and that, suddenly there's not very much time to to spend on this new music. So it's really hard to make that impact as a young band nowadays. I think, but but if you get that, if you get that little piece of 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 the attention. It's it's really really um, it's really good because the audience is so you know faithful and, and thankful and really they they come to your concerts they buy your album they buy your T-shirt and that's I don't see that in any any other genre of course in metal music but it's kind of uh, 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 an audience that kind of goes between the two and it's 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 uh, it's really nice, you know. That's the best way to describe it, I think. Uh, are you keeping? Uh, are you guys keeping yourself updated with today's progressive music, like the 
2010 and above? Like, uh, and and if so, what are you guys listening to? I mean, I think uh, uh, the entire band is always kind of looking for new music. Yeah. You just have to have the like the opportunity to do it. Like, you have to have time to either listen to it at home or uh, use like Spotify to listen to new music all the time and just download albums that you have no idea what is and try to listen to them and but uh, I don't think we necessarily seek out as uh, prog music explicitly but uh, more like we listen to everything and uh, whatever we like we uh, like if you find a song you like you check out the album if you like the album you check out more albums yeah. and if you really like it you'll go to their shows whenever you have the opportunity and buy the CD and uh, so I think uh, things like Spotify and SoundCloud has made it a lot easier yep. for us to check out new music, just to uh, see like it follow their links, like uh, related artists or use like artist radios and try to find new songs and new bands because you always want something new because everything's so special when you hear it for the first time. Mm. So uh, just uh, being able to find new music and enjoy new music is we will probably always do. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of things that it's more in the, like of uh, um, well in in the fusion genre. So there's a lot of things that's well. F first of all, people would recognize as jazz music. It still has that rock uh, attitude, uh, etc. Uh, that really we we were really into. Um, but of course, like. Bands like Meshuggah have been really important for us, like the for the especially for the rhythmic part of Seven Impale, uh, and uh, and of course like the bands the bands that we you mentioned some of the bands uh, from Norway like Motorcycle uh, and Benjamin mentioned Spider God, it's also bands that that we we follow them and and check out always when they have something new going on and so that's a big happening. Uh, because it's 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 important to it is important to 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 be in the scene and listen to what the scene is providing nowadays. Um, but I, speaking for myself, I was studying classical music. I have to admit that I I mostly listen to classical music, uh, but occasionally, of course, I put on like uh, I of course I've been listening a lot to the new Meshuggah album and. Um, and of course, motorcycle. Whenever they have something new going on, and and Yaga assist, of course. Gojira, Gojira. So, but very much on the heavier part of the heavier part of progressive rock, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last question: Are you uh, planning a tour? Well, or a few gigs. <laughs> We really want to. Yeah. I mean, we we were, if we had the opportunity, we would probably just tour every country in Europe and every and every state in the United States and Canada and Mexico. And because we know we know there are people there who want to see us. But if there's just five people in your country that has heard of us, it's really hard for us to actually like make our own tour. So. Yeah. The only the way we would probably get around is probably the same way we traveled around with Octavus yep. and uh, Krakow and Vulture Industries uh, last year when they had a tour and we managed to get along with them. Mm. And that's uh, if we are going to tour Europe, we're probably going to do it that way. Yeah, and it's it's well, this is all back to the like the financial question. Uh, it's it's really expensive and, and like the cost that we. We had to cover for the 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 mini Europe tour last year with Arcturus. That take, took some time. That was a heavy beating on on the the band's economy and personal economies of the band. So it's it's really a shame that it's so hard. But that's that's just how it is. And and of course the what's really nice about progressive music and the fans of progressive music uh, that is that you you will be able to f have fans in like every part of the world it's not as locally uh, uh, as many other genres that like this and this country they they listen mostly to this kind of music etc etc you'll find progressive music fans in every country in the world which is really nice but it's 
often very small uh, scenes and and few fans and um, so it's really expensive because you you probably not co uh, cover the costs and probably not cover like fifty percent of the costs. So it's yeah. That's why festivals are sometimes the way to go as well. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been we've been like kind of contacting and well, kind of not probably not too much, but still we we've hoped that we have some more festival gigs. We played the Progressist in Belgium yeah. this April, which was really, really, really nice. Fantastic festival. The really great people at our festival. And we played just before Caravan, which was which is a big name. And like, oh, just playing just before Caravan. But we would like to do that a lot more. And um, But, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a lot of festivals, but there's a lot of bands. And of course, there's a lot of bands still from the 70s, from the 80s, from the 90s that's still around and doing great jobs and playing great music uh, and still being very, very um, up to date. So it's it's if you if you have to choose between this 70s band that you know will sell a lot of tickets, uh, other than this young Norwegian band that's has some praise. But you don't know if that you will sell any tickets. Of course, it's 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 a question of economy on both sides. So sad reality. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. I guess we just reached the end of the interview. Is there anything you'd like to add? Thank you to everyone for listening. Buy your album. No. <laughs> no. We we'll, we we'll, we'll, please check out the music and uh, and. Um, and if you, of course, uh, we on, on this last album Contrapasso, we we've noticed that there is a lot of people who's kind of uh, finding it hard to to grasp in the in the uh, in the like the first listening. But uh, same for us. <laughs> but so, but uh, have some patience with our music. I think uh, if we have something to say about our music. Um, uh, and I think, um, and we hope to see people around <laughs> that we'd be able to come around and play. That, that that's the fun, fun part of it. That playing shows really. So we hope we can be able to do that. Great, great. Well, thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for accepting the invite on profile and talk soon. See ya. See ya. Bye.